welcome back to the Jazz Pursuit. In this video, we're going to look at the classic standard Blue Bossa. Blue Bossa was written by trumpeter Kenny Dorham in 1963, and it's a great introduction to Latin repertoire, with notable recordings by Joe Henderson, JJ Johnson, Dexter Gordon, and Kenny Dorham himself. In this video, we're going to break down and analyse the harmony, melody and structure of Blue Bossa, hopefully making it easier to learn and remember. Do like and subscribe below, and for a PDF handout that includes our analysis, lead sheet and piano sheet music of our arrangement, visit our website linked in the description. Right, let's get started. So first off, let's look at the key bits of information. Blue Bossa is in the key of C minor, and the time signature is 4-4. Four four. The form is 16 bars, and the head is often played twice before moving on to the solos. As the name suggests, Blue Bossa has a bossa nova feel. This primarily means that the feel is straight rather than swung, but we'll get stuck into specific bossa nova features and comping patterns later in the video. Great! So now let's dive in and take a look at the harmony. Blue Bossa is in the key of C minor, and this is exactly where the harmony starts, with two bars of chord one, C minor seven. Next, the harmony moves to chord four. When referring to chords by numbers, the number dictates which degree of the home key scale is the root note of the chord. So for chord four, the root note of the chord is the fourth degree of the home key scale, C minor, which is F. The chord is then built using the notes of the home key scale. So in this case, we know the root is F, the third is A flat, the fifth is C, and the seventh is E flat. This is F minor seven, and it's worth noting that chord 4 in every minor key is a minor 7 chord, as the theory behind every minor key is the same. So, Blue Bossa starts with two bars of chord 1, C minor 7, and then moves to chord 4, F minor 7, for another two bars. Next, there's a 2 5 1 cadence back to chord 1, C minor 7. As the target point of the 2 5 1 cadence is a minor chord, this means the 2-5-1 cadence itself is minor. In a major 2-5-1, the 2 chord is a minor 7 chord, the 5 chord is a dominant 7 chord, and the 1 chord is a major 7 chord. However, in a minor 2-5-1, the chords are tweaked. The 2 chord is instead a half diminished chord, which is also known as a minor 7 flat 5 chord. The 5 chord remains a dominant 7 chord, and the 1 chord is a minor 7 chord. The differences are due to each cadence being built from a different scale. The major 2-5-1 is based on the major scale, whereas the minor 2-5-1 is based on the harmonic minor scale. Anyway, back to Blue Bossa and the minor 2-5-1 cadence to chord 1. C minor 7 is the 1 chord and target point of the cadence. So this means the 2 chord is D half diminished, also known as D minor 7 flat 5, and the 5 chord is G7, which resolves to chord 1, C minor 7, to finish the first half of the tune. Cool! So now let's hear the first 8 bars in time on the piano. Great, so that's half of the harmony done. Now let's take a look at the first half of the melody. Blue Bossa is made up of four phrases, all of which last for four bars and are built using primarily the notes of the home key scale, C natural minor. A natural minor scale is the simplest form of a minor scale, 
and it's built using only the notes of the relative major key, in this case E flat major. So the notes of C natural minor are C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat and B flat. Cool! So now let's dive in and take a look at phrase number one. Phrase one begins by rising an octave on the fifth of the C minor seven chord, G. Then it walks down through the home key scale, C natural minor, until it reaches the root. It then continues falling through the home key scale until it reaches the sixth, A flat. This A flat also reinforces the change of harmony from C minor seven to F minor seven, as it's the third of the new chord. Next, the melody approaches the root note of the new chord, F minor seven, from a scale note above. F is the target, and the melody lands first on the second G before falling to the root F. Cool, now let's hear phrase one in time on the piano. Great, and now for phrase two. Phrase two is a direct sequence of phrase one. The melody is identical, but every note has been shifted down by one scale note. The only difference is phrase two doesn't begin with an octave jump, as this was a pickup, also known as an anacrusis, in phrase one. So, it starts on the third of the D half diminished chord, F and then walks down through the home key scale, C natural minor, from the 4th F to the 7th B flat, before continuing to fall until reaching the 5th G. The melody then ends with another scale note approach from above. The 3rd of the C minor 7 chord, E flat, is the target, and the melody lands first on the 4th F, before falling to the 3rd E flat. Phrase two backs up the harmony. It starts on the third of the D half diminished chord F and ends by outlining both the fifth and third of the C minor seven chord, G and E flat. However, it also outlines a B flat on the G seven chord. On the surface, we'd think this is a minor third and doesn't reinforce the G seven chord. Instead, this is really an A sharp and the sharp nine of the G7 chord, rather than the minor third. So let's put this information in the chord symbol, and G7 becomes G7 sharp nine. Super, so that's phrase two done. Now let's hear the melody from the top. Cool, so that's half the harmony and melody covered. Now, let's carry on and tackle the second half of the harmony. So just to recap, we started on chord one, C minor seven, and then moved to chord four, F minor seven, before we had a minor two, five, one cadence that took us back to chord one, C minor seven. D half diminished is the two chord, G seven is the five chord, and C minor seven is the one chord. Nice. And now the next four bars take us outside of the home key. And there's a two, five, one cadence to the flat second. The flat second in C minor is D flat. And this is a major seven chord. So D flat major seven is the one chord and target point of the two, five, one cadence. So this firstly means that the 2-5-1 itself is major, and that the 2 chord is E flat minor 7, the 5 chord is A flat 7, and the 1 chord is D flat major 7. The harmony then rests on this D flat major 7 chord for two bars, before there's a final 2-5-1 
back to chord 1 C minor 7 to end the form and the tune. As the one chord and target point of this 2 5 1 is C minor 7, this means the cadence is identical to the one in the second line. So D half diminished is the 2 chord, G7 is the 5 chord, and C minor 7 is the 1 chord. Great! So that's all the chords covered. Now let's hear the harmony from the top. So this leaves us with just the second half of the melody left to cover. The melody up to this point has been a sequence, but the continuation of this perfect sequence is stopped by the harmony. Here in the third line, the harmony moves outside of the home key, with a 2-5-1 to the flat second D flat major. If the melody continued its sequencing theme in the home key scale, C natural minor, then it would clash with this new harmony. So the melody mirrors the harmony and also moves away from the home key. I think of phrase 3 in terms of the new 1 chord, D flat major. Phrase 3 begins on the 2nd E flat and then walks down through the D flat major scale to the 5th A flat. Up to this point, the melody has copied the rhythmic identity and shape of the first two phrases, but here it changes. It then falls to the fourth G flat before rocking between the third and sixth F and B flat, ending the phrase by landing on the fifth A flat. Cool, so now let's hear phrase three on the piano. Great, and now for phrase 4, and a clever compositional trick. So far, there have been three phrases that have had similar shape and rhythmic identity. Rather than continuing this theme in phrase 4, the fourth phrase has a completely new shape and rhythm. This not only gives the melody contour, but also reinforces the overall structure and form. Phrase 4 starts with a three note cell. On the D half diminished chord, it moves from the 5th A flat to the 4th G to the 6th B flat. This cell is then repeated directly in the next bar, on the G7 chord. But the notes of the 3 note cell now have different functions. The A flat is the flat 9, the G is the root, and the B flat is the sharp 9. Phrase 4 then ends with a semitone approach from above to the fifth of the one chord, G. This is a really cool way to end the melody and gives the rhythm section some hits and momentum into the top of the form. Again, as there's some specific extensions on the G7 chord, we should put the flat nine and sharp nine in the chord symbol. Let's now hear the melody in full. Great, so that's the harmony and melody of Blue Bossa covered. Last up, we're going to look at some Bossa Nova comping ideas. The foundation of Latin music is rooted in claves. These are rhythmic patterns that underpin different grooves and are the rhythmic key to different styles. One of the most common claves is the son clave, and we're going to look at the 3-2 variation. 
This clave is spread over two bars of 4-4, four, four, and as the name 3-2 suggests, there are three hits in the first bar and two hits in the second. Here's how it looks in notation. I'll play the first eight bars of Blue Bossa in this clave to demonstrate. So this is the starting point of bossa nova comping. But it's quite general and not very authentic. To really get inside the different styles, you have to immerse yourself in that particular genre and see how the claves are tweaked and varied. One variation for a bossa nova is to tweak the last hit of the clave and push it back by one quaver or eighth note. This is how this variation sounds through the first eight bars. So that's just one variation. Time to get listening and see how else the claves can be varied. So that's all from me. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. Do like and subscribe below and for a PDF handout that includes all the analysis plus lead sheet and transcription of our arrangement, check out our website linked in the description below. Happy practicing!